Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 8 to the power x plus 27 to the power x divided by 12 to the power x plus 18 to the power x, and that is equal to 7 over 6. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this problem is from a book called 101 Problems in Algebra from the training of the USA IMO team. IMO is the International Math Olympiads, six problems, two days, nine hours. It's just a crazy, crazy intense test. Anyways, this is not an IMO level, nor is it a USAMO or AMI, any lower level, but it's just used for the training. It has some good ideas. So let's go ahead and see how we can approach this problem in multiple ways. A to the X, 27 to the X, divided by 12 to the X, plus 18 to the x equals 7 over 6. Now, when I look at the numerator of this problem, one thing that I can think of is the sum of two cubes. Aren't you thinking the same thing? Look at this. This is 2 to the power x cubed. This is 3 to the power x cubed. So that looks like sum of two cubes. What about the bottom? When I look at the bottom, I notice that 6 to the power x is a common factor. So let's go ahead and see if we can use it to simplify this. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and write the numerator as two to the power x to the third power and three to the power x to the third power. So this becomes sum of two cubes and I'll give you a formula. At the bottom, since I said that six to the x is a common factor, I can kind of pull it out and inside, we need to write a term such that when I multiply by six to the power x, gives me 12 to the power x and think about it they have the same exponent so the bases must be multiplied and 6 times what equals 12 if you think about that question you'll get the answer right away 2 to the power x so this is the idea behind factoring i know some people say division you can use division but you don't really have to worry about it just think about what we should multiply by to get the term desired plus what should I multiply by to get 18, 18 to the power x? Think about this, and it's going to come up as 3 to the power x. So far, so good. Now, notice that if I use the formula for sum of two cubes in the numerator, then I'll be able to simplify this. Do you see that? Hopefully. Now, let's go ahead and remember what the formula was. a cubed plus b cubed can be written as a plus b. That's how you can factor it. Obviously, that's not the only way to write it. Times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Awesome. You should definitely know this. Now, if you apply it to this problem, it's going to look like this. 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and then multiply by a squared, which is going to be 2 to the x squared. That's 4 to the x. Just square the base. Don't worry about the exponent. Minus, multiply these two things. You hopefully know it's 6 to the x plus b squared, which is 3 to the x times 3 to the x, which is 9 to the power x. So far, so good. Notice that the exponent will always stay the same. You're only going to work with the base. All right. And here we have 6 to the x as a common factor, 2 to the x plus 3 to the x. Awesome. Now take a look. 2 to the x plus 3 to the x, 2 to the x plus 3 to the x cancel out as long as that sum is not equal to 0. But can we guarantee that? Can 2 to the x plus 3 to the x ever be zero and the answer is not for real numbers can that be zero in the complex world that's a different question right but let's go ahead and focus on our problem now we have something simpler so now we have 4 to the x minus 6 to the x plus 9 to the x all of that is divided by 6 to the x nice and that's equal to what 7 over 6 beautiful now there's a lot of different ways to approach this problem. Again, we're going to have to kind of branch out. But let me kind of, kind of tell you, this could be like a 1A or a 1B. Should, I should have used this for method 2 so that I could say 2B, but you get the idea. So now, I can go ahead and use substitution here. I could have used it at the beginning too, by the way. But anyway, let's save it for later. So I can say, hey, suppose 2 to the X is A and 3 to the X is B. What am I getting from here? 4 to the x is a squared, right? So let's go ahead and just plug it in directly. We don't have to write it. It's a squared minus ab plus 9 to the x is just going to be b squared. And I'm dividing that 
pi 6 to the x, which is a, b, right? You see, these two things are the same. And that's equal to 7 over 6. Hmm. What can I do with this? I could probably just divide everything by a, b. That's going to give me a over b minus 1 plus b over a because b's are going to cancel out equals 7 over 6. And this is amazing because this turns into a quadratic equation. How? Is that quadratic? Yes, because we have this thing and it's reciprocal. So let's go ahead and use mu not multiplication. Um, substitution, yes, that's the term. Let's go ahead and use t for this because t is awesome. I like t. That gives us t plus 1 over t minus 1 equals 7 over 6. By the way, you could just add 1 to both sides and get 13 over 6. Great. Now we can go ahead and multiply everything by t. And then we're going to get this equation and put everything on the same side. And that's going to be your quadratic. Can we solve it? Let's give it a try. We have something called the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 169 over 36, minus 4ac, which is minus 4, 144. You're going to subtract. Oops, that's not. It's 2a. So it's just going to be a 2 because a is 1, right? Look at that. Okay, cool. And I don't like writing y because that looks confusing to me. I don't know. Anyways, that's me, maybe. Now, if you make a common denominator, you're going to get 169 minus 144 divided by 36. And that's going to be 144 over 36. So this is 144 over 36. Such a beautiful number, right? That's a perfect square fraction. Now, I can write it as plus minus 12 over 6 and divide by 2. And boom, you're done. One of the t values is going to be 12 plus 13. That's going to be 25. Over 6 over 2, that's going to be over 12. Beautiful. And the other t value is just going to be uh, 13 minus 12, which is 1, 1 over 12. Yay. What is t though, right? We have to go back. t is a over b. Awesome. But what is a over b? We have to back substitute one more time. But if you remember, a is 2 to the x and b is 3 to the x. Great. And the same thing goes here, right? 2 to the x and 3 to the x. Hmm, interesting. How can I solve for x from here then, right? Well, I can kind of write this as 2 over 3 to the power x, and then use logs, same thing goes here. I was expecting to get something integer, something nice. Didn't come out, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't always happen. Anyways, let's go ahead and now set this equal to 25 over 12, and we're going to be able to solve for it, right? But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about a different way to approach this problem. And this is how we can do it. Now, notice that we have this expression at the very beginning, right? Now, you could have substituted 2 to the x equals a and 3 to the x equals b at the very beginning, right? But let's, it's pretty much going to give you the same thing after some cancellations. Let's go ahead and do this differently at this point. So I can go ahead and cross multiply here. That's going to give me 6a squared. Let me go ahead and erase this area so I can work here. That's going to look like this. I'm going to be getting something like this. Let's see. 6a squared minus 6ab plus 6b squared equals 7ab. And then bring it over. 6a squared minus 13ab plus 6b squared equals 0. Now, here's the thing. When we did our work here, we got a 1, right? But if you divide everything by 6, that's going to be the same thing. Okay, so we're on, we're on the right track. But here's the thing. From here, we can get something nice because this is factorable. You know how? Uh, first of all, 6a squared can be factored into 6a and a. And this can be do 6b and b. Or they can switch around. Or we can use 2a and 3a. And of course, this can switch around too. So there are quite a few possibilities. That's why there's something called the x method which I really like, and this is how it works. You should know this. 6 times 6 is equal to 36, so I'm going to write the product here, and the sum is negative 13, all right? That's the product, the top number, which is obtained by multiplying the first and the last coefficients. Make sense? And now, we're going to look for two numbers whose product is, remember this is the product, and this is the sum, right? Whose product is 36 and whose sum is negative 13? 
do those numbers really exist? Yes, they do. And those numbers are actually negative 4 and negative 9. There you go. Because their product is 36 and their sum is negative 13. Awesome. That gives us a way to break down the negative 13 into negative 4ab minus 9ab plus 6b squared. And then we can factor by grouping. Awesome. The rest is easy. We're going to take out 2a. That's going to give us 3a minus 2b. Yay! 2b or not 2b minus 3b. And now we're going to get 3 a minus 2. Okay, that didn't quite work out. I think I made a mistake. Let's go ahead and check our work. So I took out a 2a here, so that should give me 6a squared minus 4ab. And here I should take out a 3b, 3a minus 2b, of course. I forgot to include the b there. That's why I'm kind of confusing myself. Now we get 3a minus 2b multiplied by 2a minus 3b is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, this is going to give us something nice, by the way. I probably made a mistake with the first method, which is going to become clear in a little bit, but don't worry, I'm not going to cut this part, so you'll get to see uh, how I made it. Anyways, so now, here's what we're going to see from here. Set each of these equal to zero, and we're going to get this and that. Awesome. Because from here, A, is, A over B is going to be two-thirds, or A over B is going to be three-halves. But remember, A and B were given as two to the X, and 3 to the x, so we got these equalities, and guess what? This is going to give you x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. Basically, there should be two solutions for this equation, and that's what they are. Why didn't the first method work? That's for you to find out, but this basically brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.